Transmission commencing. Stand by. Hello, today I'm going to talk about the domain names. Domain names are used to identify one or more IP addresses. So, for example, in, when we see Microsoft.com, that's a domain name, and it represents about several computers, dozens of computers, uh, that have different IP addresses at Microsoft. Now, the domain names are part of that bigger URL string of text that we use in the different browsers. Um, for example, in this uh, URL, you see that part of this URL string is the domain name, facebook.com, and that's, part, well, that's the domain name in this URL. And it's, uh, you, this URL is pointing to the, uh, to a, the index website resource located at Facebook computers. Now, you'll notice that besides the name, we also have something called an extension, the .com. That also tells things about this domain to the computers. Um, for example, you have different uh, URL ex um, domain name extensions here. Um, the first type is the ones that represent countries. So when you see, or the computer see a .cn, for example, that tells the computers that that uh, IP belongs to a computer residing in China, physically residing in China. Now, uh, also you have two different kinds of uh, extensions. You have sponsored and unsponsored. The sponsored ones need to go through a series of uh, procedures or regulations to be obtained. For example, if when you see a .edu domain name extension, that indicates that the uh, domain belongs to a university or college or school that is um, recognized as such and accredited. Uh, so not anybody can have a .edu. And also sometimes this is a good indicator that the uh, educational um, institution is legit. Also there's like .gov, indicating this is from the American government, etc. etc. The unsponsored domain name extensions and do not have those regulations and they can just be purchased almost by anybody. They indicate different things. The most commonly known is the .com that indicates a commercial type of business, uh, of business or company. Then you have the .net, the .org, which is an organization, etc., etc. Now, besides the domain name and the domain extension, we also have in that URL different things that indicates the kind of protocol we need to use and the kind of services we require. So protocols are simply rules that it tells computers how to do things or what are the steps and regulations that they need to do. The protocols are not very different in theory as the rules that we have when we're driving. When we see a stop sign, we have to stop. When we change lane, we have to put the, the, the turning sign, etc., etc. The same happens with computers when we transmit information. They have to obey different regulations called protocols. Now, in the first thing that we type in that URL um, to, to ask for a resource is the protocol. And normally it's HTTP. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and it's the series of rules that uh, the computers have to follow in order to translate and transfer uh, information on the internet. Now, besides this, the URL also has, after the protocol, something called the service. And uh, the most common service that we use is the www that indicates World, World, Web, World Wide Web. And this tells the computers that we require a resource that needs a computer that is serving web pages or which function is to serve web pages. So normally this is put for a web server server. So sometimes though, we need other things. We need to transfer files that are not web, web pages. So we will use a different service or a different server. So if we type FTP, we are telling the computers that are involved in these uh, protocols or in this transfer that we're going to need a computer that is a file transfer protocol server. So it's a, it's a server that is in charge of transferring files, not just web pages. So you see that in our URL, there are many, many things that we are telling the computers at the same time. The f uh, this is to summarize, you know, this is how a URL stands for or looks like. And the first part of the URL 
indicates the protocol that we need to use. The most common one is HTTP, but there are others like HTTPS, which is a variation of HTTP that is encrypted for security. And after that protocol, we also have the service type of the server that we are asking resources from. In this case, if we put www, that means we're gonna use a web, a worldwide web server. Uh, sometimes people don't put this in their URL, so the, the computer just assumes it's www by default. Now, after that, we also have the domain name, which is this section of the URL. In this case, it's google.com, indicating the owner of this IP address or IP addresses uh, of the domain, and in this case is Google, and a subsection of the domain name and is the extension or the domain extension, which is in this case .com, indicating that the uh, um, institution is a commercial institution. So you see how in this URL that we type every day to access web pages, we are telling the computer and the computers involved in this magic of the internet many, many things. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you did. And don't forget to watch the other videos of this series. Thank you.